Hi guys, welcome once again to this platform and on our series on engineering mechanics. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell. Today we are looking at friction, determination of frictional force for conditions of equilibrium and motion. Let us look at our question and how to solve it. In the diagram below, the magnitude of of is of the 200 newtons the magnitude of the force is 200 newtons and the coefficient of friction are us equals 0 0.3 uk equals 0 0.2 determine a if the block is in equilibrium b the magnitude and direction of the frictional force Let's look at how to solve this question. Good. Now we have been given this question and we have been told that the magnitude of the force P, this force P is 200 Newtons. And we are asked to determine whether body is in equilibrium and determine the frictional force. This question is on determination of the state of the body, whether it is in equilibrium or it is in motion. Therefore, anytime you get a question like this, the first thing you need to do is to draw your free body diagram. Let's see how to draw a free body diagram. This is the body, this inclined, this is the inclination. And then this is our object, the block. The block is here. This is our block. And then the weight of the block is giving us 150 newtons, 150 newtons. And the whole thing is inclined at an angle of 20 degrees. So this is 20 degrees. This is 20 degrees. And the force is applied at this direction. We have a force being applied in this direction. And we are told that the force is P and the magnitude is 200 Newtons. And we are told that where the force is applied is making an angle of 35 with the inclined plane. And looking at where this force is applied, looking at the direction of where the force is applied. If this block is to move, it is going to move up the plane. It is going to move up the plane. And the frictional force always acts in the opposite direction. Therefore, our frictional force, because motion is going to move upwards, our frictional force is going to act in the opposite direction, which will be down like that between the, the body and then the surface of inclination. And then because everything there is inclined at an angle of 20 degrees, the normal reaction is also going to be inclined. Take note of that. Always the normal reaction is 90 degrees to the surface of contact. Therefore, this normal reaction in will be 90 degrees to the inclined plane. Take note of that. It will always be 90 degrees to the inclined plane. So this is our frictional force F 
this is our normal reaction. This is the weight of the body. This is the applied force. And we are told that the angle of inclination is 20 degrees. Now, in this kind of questions, we need to change our normal axis, which is X and Y. Our normal axis is like this, X, and this is our Y. But you can see, because of the inclination, for us to make work easier for ourselves, we need to change our axis and take it that now we are going to take the inclined plane as our x axis. We are going to take the inclined plane as our x axis. So this would be our x, our x axis. And when we are moving down here, it's going to be positive. When we are moving this direction, it's going to be negative. And don't forget that the X and the Y axis are always 90 degrees to each other. Therefore, if we have taken the inclined plane as our X axis, then this direction is going to be our Y. This is going to be our Y axis. And we are going to take this direction as positive and down here as negative. Having been able to do that, you realize that now our frictional force is exactly on the X axis. And then the normal reaction is also exactly on the y axis. So this will be our y. However, we are left with this force P, which is not in the x, our new x axis, or in the y axis. Therefore, we need to resolve this force into component. And then we can also see that the weight of the block is not in any of the axis. And therefore, we need to also resolve the weight of the block into components. Quickly, let's look at how to resolve the weight into components. So for the 150 Newton force, resolving the 150 Newton force into components. Looking at the direction, it is pointing downwards. The weight always point downwards. Therefore, if you want to resolve on the X, we are going to move like this. It's going to move like this. And this direction is in the direction with our positive X axis. Look at the direction. It's in line with our positive X direction. And so we are going to get our f of x to be positive. f of x will be equal to. And because everything is inclined at an angle of 20 degrees, it means that here the inclination of this force to the y axis will, will also be equal to 20 degrees to be equivalent to the angle of inclination for the plane. So the angle here will also be 20 degrees. Take note of that. But this angle is the angle that force makes to the y axis. So this inclination is also going to be 20 degrees. And from there, you can see that the 20 degrees angle is facing our x axis. Therefore, our x component is going to be, and we have stated that it is moving the direction with our positive axis. Therefore, it's going to be 150 sine 20. Now from here, you can also see that if you want to, this is the starting point and look at the direction of the force. This is our ending point. Therefore, from here, we are going to move down. We are going to move down like this. And from there, look at the direction we are moving down. We said that anytime you are coming down, it's negative on the Y. Therefore, our Y component is going to be 150. And the angle is now adjacent to our Y component. And therefore, we are going to get 150 cos 20. So this is going to give us 51.3. This is also going to give us 141 newtons. And we also need to resolve this force P into X and Y component. Now let's look at it. You can see that now, if you want to resolve that force, this is the starting point of the force. This is on the direction. This is the end point of the force. Therefore, in resolving, we are going to move this direction on the Y. And this direction on the Y, because we are coming down, we said that it's going to be negative. And on the X, we are going to move up like this. And moving up like this is going to be, moving up like this is going to be negative also for X, because we said that when we are coming down this way, it's positive for X. Therefore, for us, moving this direction is going to be negative. Therefore, both x for the 200 force, both x and y is going to be negative. And therefore, our f of x is going to be negative 200 
you can see that our S component is adjacent to the angle 30. Then we are going to get 200 cos 35. And then our F of Y, I've already stated that it's also coming down negative to give us negative 200 sine 35. Once we have been able to do that, now we can, uh, we can apply our conditions. Anytime you are working on friction to determine whether the body is in equilibrium or not, there are three conditions which exist. The first condition is in equilibrium. If your block or your body is in equilibrium, then we are going to use our equilibrium conditions, which is sum of f of x is equal to zero, sum of f of y is equal to zero, and sum of moment is equal to zero to determine the frictional force and the normal reaction. And the case number two is when we are in motion. When you are in motion, then you cannot use the equations of equilibrium to determine the frictional force. However, you need to determine the frictional force from this formula, Fa is equal to Upn. And then the third one is when we are in pending motion. And when you are in pending motion, then in that case, you are getting the maximum frictional force. And the maximum frictional force is equal to Uxn. Therefore, in this case, in the question, we were asked to determine whether the body was in equilibrium or not. Anytime you are giving such questions, you assume equilibrium conditions. And once you are done with the equilibrium conditions, you calculate your frictional force and your normal reaction. You check whether your condition was right or not using this formula down here. Therefore, let's assume equilibrium conditions and determine our frictional force and our normal reaction. So the frictional force, we are assuming on the X axis, we can see that sum of X is equal to zero. And our direction is like this. Anytime you are coming down like this, it's positive. Therefore, our frictional force, you have our frictional force coming down. So the frictional force will be positive, F. And then we have the S component for the force P. The S, the S component for the force P was negative 200 cos 35, which is negative 163.8. And then the Y component for that force is negative 114.7. So from here, we can say that the S component for our force P was negative 163.8. And then our S component for our force, our weight, which is 150, was 51.3. And everything will be equal to zero. From there, our F will be equal to 112.2.5 Newtons. And then we can also use sum of F of Y equals zero. And we are zooming upwards to be positive, this direction to be positive. Therefore, the, we have our normal reaction moving upwards and therefore it's going to be positive. So we have N and then we have our Y component for the 200 Newton force coming down, which we said that is going to be negative. So it's going to be negative 114.7. And then we have the Y component for our weight that was also coming down like that. And so it's going to give us Sorry for that, our Y component for this was coming down. So it's supposed to be negative. So you are going to get negative 141.7 is equal to zero. And from there, our N will be equal to 255.7 Newtons. Once you have been able to calculate our frictional force and the normal reaction from the equilibrium conditions, now, what we need to do is to verify whether our assumption that the body was in equilibrium is true or not. And how do you verify that? You verify that by using the maximum frictional force, which is Fm is equal to Usn. So from the question we have been giving Us as 0 
So you have 0 0.3 times our normal reaction, which is 255.7. So from there, we are getting our maximum frictional force to be equal to 76.7 newtons. Now, after you have calculated the maximum frictional force, if the maximum frictional force is the maximum frictional force is less than the frictional force you calculated, assuming equilibrium conditions, then it means that your object was in motion. So take note of that number one, if Fm is less than if you have calculated assuming equilibrium, equilibrium, then it means that our body was in motion. And number two, if Fm is greater than F, then it means that our body is in equilibrium. It's in equilibrium. These are the two conditions. But now you can see that Fm is less than our F, which we calculated assuming the equilibrium conditions. Therefore, it means that the body is not in equilibrium, but rather it is in motion. And once you have been able to establish that the body was not in equilibrium, was not in equilibrium, but it was in motion. Now what you need to do is to calculate the frictional force again, using the formula for calculating frictional force when the body is in motion. And we have already stated that when the body is in motion, the frictional force is kinetic friction, and it is given by UK N. And from here, our UK from the question is given as 0 0.2 times our normal reaction, which is 255.7. So from here, our frictional kinetic friction will be equal to 51.14 newtons. And we are done with our question. However, if you are, if you realize that Fm is, if you realize that Fm is greater than F, then in that case, this one, what you have calculated, will still remain your frictional force, will still remain your frictional force. But in this case, Fm was greater, Fm was less than F. Therefore, we are in motion and you need to calculate the frictional force again using this formula. So this was much easier. However, if you have any question or any comment or any contribution or suggestion, you can let us know at the comment session. Once again, we are very grateful for having you with us and staying in touch with us all this while in this series. We kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel. You like, you share, and then also leave your comment and suggestions at the comment session. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video. Bye-bye.